Why is running as a leftist so difficult? The entire system uh, and, and the legitimate Will you be listening to the legitimate the entry points to participate in the system revolve around capitalism. Yikes, it's the same concept uh, that is that you see in manufacturing consent, where if you want to rise up up the ranks of the media, for example, the media works as a institution that is supposed to normalize everything that you're experiencing under capitalism, and if the if the media works to defend capitalism, then those who are anti-capitalist are probably not going to rise up the ranks without letting go of their anti-capitalist uh, points of view. Great example of this is, you know, Van Jones, who apparently used to be a radical, uh, or at least worked with some uh, communists, like Maoists. You know, like literal Maoist third world is in San Francisco. Now he's on CNN. And you will never hear a peep about the uh, leftist values from him ever. Drift. Maoist, uh, Maoist Van Jones and I have the same exact team, full disclosure, at WME, by the way. Be on the lookout of my, um, my point of view. Well, I was never a fucking Maoist, but, you know. Be on the lookout for a POV change from your boy. Hey man, just gotta say you've begun looking increasingly... Yeah, cinema too. Cinema. Christmas cinema was like... I mean, these people are like you know, gutter punk, crusty anarchist, or like, America KKK, uh, uh, type leftist, though. Like, they were, they were way more aggro than me. They were like, cranks, months, bad, bad. I, I would say. And some of you are here, in my audience, and some of you have uh, crank-like points of view, too. But, you know. Hi. Like, this is our own website. Like, this is an agitprop, okay? I am in SF Kirsten right Cinema to the right of Mitch McConnell in new legislative rankings. Good. You understand? This is Kristen Cinema. That's her own website promoting this, okay? To the right of Mitch McConnell. Like, that's her own Senate, like, uh, Senate campaign website straight up publishing this. Talking about like how she's to the right Three of fucking months, Mitch McConnell. Everyone. Does anyone have any links of her old days though? She was like Occupy Wall Street. Like she she used to be like Can a one time Ralph Nader supporting bomb thrower win Arizona Senate seat? Democrats hope so. Representative Kristen Cinema, the likely nominee, is trying to transform herself into a conservative Democrat by being a semi-reliable supporter of the president. She used to have like blue hair and shit too back in the day. Cinema, you don't have Happy to do this. Oh, she's done this already. Good luck. First openly bisexual member of Congress. First member to list their religion as none. Uh, boost our personal story includes a childhood stint in an abandoned gas station, a scholarship to Brigham Young University, and uh, time as a social worker helping refugees. She began her political career on Ralph Nader's 2000 presidential campaign as a local Green, Spar Green Party spokeswoman. In 2001, she ran unsuccessfully for Phoenix City Council while refusing to accept campaign contributions. That's bribery, she told the Arizona Republic. In 2002, the Republic published a letter from her bemoaning the idea of capitalism until the average American realizes that capitalism damages her livelihood while augmenting the livelihoods of the wealthy. The almighty dollar will continue to rule, she wrote. That year, the state Democratic Party called her too extreme when she ran for state legislature as an independent candidate and called for closing a local Air Force base. After she won her first election as a Democrat at the Arizona House in 2004, Cinema spent a year at the state capitol as a bomb thrower, she wrote in a 2009 political organizing book, how to book Unite and Conquer. In the mid 2000s, she organized March for the Immigrants' Rights and led the nation's first successful campaign to defeat a state constitutional amendment to ban same sex unions. In 2001, the Phoenix New Times, an alternative weekly, named her the best local lefty icon. But as the Democratic Party moved to the left, cinema moved to the right. In 2001, 43% of Democrats called themselves moderates and 36 considered themselves liberal, according to the Wall Street Journal. God, 2001 was so fucking cancer for politics. And for our understanding of politics, I'm just like looking at this 
And it's so disgusting to me. It's like, <laughs> okay. Uh, a new poll in January found 51% of Democrats said they were liberals, while 36 said moderate. It's my three month. When Miss Cinema won a new congressional seat in 2012, she reinvented herself as a bipartisan deal maker. She joined the Blue Dog Coalition, became one of the most conservative Democrats in Washington. Trump lost her Phoenix based district by 16 percentage points, but since she took office, Miss Cinema voted with him 55% of the time. 55% of the time. Check out the McSally ad on Cinema's Tutu. I was deployed to the Middle East, led airstrikes against the. It's so funny. Oh, God, Martha McSally is a babe. I'm sorry. Um, God damn, or was, but it, it's funny because like Arizona Senate seat, like she lost, uh, barely, but she lost to Kirsten Cinema, right? And and the hilarity here is like. Taliban and was the first woman to fly a fighter jet in combat. I know the price of freedom. While we let me ask you something. We're gonna watch this ad from Martha McSally, and then I'm gonna show you another ad, okay? Two and you tell me who's a Democrat and who's a fucking uh Republican. We're in harm's way in uniform. Kirsten Cinema was protesting us in a pink tutu and denigrating our service. The world is a dangerous place. We need strong leaders who understand the threat and respect our troops. Kirsten Cinema fails the test. I'm Martha McSally and I approve this message. Felix from Chapo has Every talked about this before, where he's like, people don't give a shit about veterans like this. Like they don't. This is in the eyes and minds of so this is the Republican running against Kirsten Cinema, who is now like more conservative. So you saw that ad, right? Let's take a look at this. When I was 12 years old, let's go, let's freaking go. When I was 12 years old, I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I grew up. I wanted to fly fighter jets and land on aircraft carriers because that's the toughest flying you can do. When I was 13, my congressman told me I couldn't fly in combat. He said Congress thought women ought to be protected and not allowed to serve in combat. Yes. I never got a letter back from my Senator Mitch McConnell. I then wrote every member of the House and Senate Armed Services Committees asking them to change the law. I said they just hadn't met me yet. What sucks about this is like, why is it that like the feminism that we manifest is through uh, people being like, I need to go fucking bomb villages in Afghanistan. By the way, notice how the ad is literally the same. Like, this is the same ad. Same fucking fuchsia uh, filter. Like, walking in front of jet... Uh, walking on a jet carrier or walking in front of a fighter jet. Talking about how, like, I'll bomb the fuck out of villages. You understand me? Um, one is in Arizona. The other one's in Kentucky. So, the, the, the thing that really hurts my fucking soul is that I know there's going to be more, like, Charlotte Climbers, for example. When trans rights are fought for okay and and they should be fought for i know that eventually we're gonna have like a trans democrat okay that literally talks about how like well i i joined the military and i fuck shit up and you know i'm i'm trans but you know donald trump tried to take it away from me and they shouldn't because it's disgusting that uh you know the trans military ban is disgusting unconstitutional ridiculous it sucks that the only time where there's like progress made, even if it's like symbolic or if it's legitimate progress being made, it's on the virtue of like being able to fucking bomb kids in, in uh, Middle East. That sucks. It literally sucks. And I already know that there is going to be, if the Democratic Party continues their fucking, uh, you know, we are conservative, we are a part of the military, hoorah, fuck yeah, we are the real veterans, we are the real patriots, bitch, like those Republicans are pussies, we'll kill more people than you, fuck you. Like, the more that they do that, you know that there's going to be, uh, like, a trans oh, wow. person, like, the next five to ten years 
which does imply progress in some way. That's like, I fought for my rights and I fucking, you know, I ended lives. <laughs> that sucks. And I knew I could do it, but most of them told me I couldn't. Then I got into the Naval Academy. Chelsea Manning. Okay, shut the this fuck up. Good. Chelsea Manning would never in a fucking million. First of all, she is a Haas buff gamer watcher, okay, in this community. She would never in a fucking She's literally regarded as a well, as an enemy of the state. Uh, I love her for that. I mean, she is brave and a whistleblower and literally got tortured. She's a national fucking hero and would never ever in a million years do that shit. Imagine, like, no, never do that. Me, and wouldn't you Especially because she's Haas buff. She's a gaming watcher, like literally. You know, that's when they changed the law. I'm Amy McGrath and I love our country. I spent 20 years as a US Marine, flew 89 combat missions bombing Al Qaeda and the Taliban. I was the first Amy woman McGrath Marine to fly in an F-18 in combat and I got to land on aircraft carriers. Now I'm running for Congress against Annie Barr in my home state of Kentucky. He's Mitch McConnell's hand-picked congressman who said he would vote enthusiastically to take health care away from over a quarter million Kentuckians. Mr. Barr, my mom is a polio survivor who became one of the first women to graduate from UK medical school. A lot of people told her she couldn't achieve her dreams either, but she persevered and ended up treating many of the same kind of people whose health care you and Mr. McConnell would take away. This is my new mission, to take on a Congress full of career politicians who treat the people of Kentucky like they're disposable. Some are telling me a Democrat can't win that battle in Kentucky, that we can't take back our country for my kids and yours. We'll see about that. Yeah, it just sucks that like, it just sucks that the only expression of feminism or like advocacy for women's rights in the democratic party revolve around the dignity of work of being able to fucking uh you know fly a fighter jet and fighter jets are fucking cool like they Small are things. but we all know what they do okay what are we doing what are we doing bragging about the numbers she put up in iraq weird champ yeah like i'm sorry but been watching you stream for I know. A while, I, look, I have a lot of active duty uh, uh, members in this community. I have a lot of veterans in this community. But you got to fucking be critical anyway. of Thanks what you're doing content. right now. And you got to be critical of your service. Capitalism. It's a really fucking hard. It's a really hard thing to admit. But like American imperialism hurts you. It hurts the rest of the world. And there are plenty of there are plenty of veterans in my community that are aware of that. Those who have served those who have uh, been active duty, those who have gone on tour, Thanks to uh, those who have seen uh, hella combat. And, and like, when you talk about the Valiants, or when you talk about your fucking KD, like, that shit sucks. It really does. Because it is a, another continuation of American imperialism and a justification of American imperialism from what is supposed to be the left, right? The Democratic Party. Like we've completely, we've completely let go of that mentality. We've completely just dropped. Like there used to be a robust anti-war movement in this country. It's gone. 9-11 eradicated that. Okay. 9-11 just eradicated the, the, uh, the, the anti-imperialist movement in this country. Democrats don't fucking, uh, agitate against war anymore. It's insane to me. Not only do they not agitate against war, they agitate for more war. And I've talked about this before, like the ad the adoption of like militaristic rhetoric or uh, or militant rhetoric against like Russia and other countries. <coughs> That's not supposed to be the Democrat way. It's not. You can't do that. Like you're not supposed to do that. Democrats are supposed to say, no, what are we doing? We're not supposed to go to fucking war. Democrats are not supposed to go on Rachel Maddow and be like, it's fucking poggers uh, when we, you know, uh, do military activities uh, in the, in the region where, uh, in North Korea is just to do a show of force. Like that's not, that's not what Democrats are supposed to advocate for. Like using foreign adversaries following since the by greatly protests, exaggerating their power, uh, to, to further our continue our imperialist endeavors is what Republicans are supposed to do. And Democrats are supposed to go against that by 
pointing out the flaws in that argument. And yet we don't do that anymore. And it fucking blows my mind. It pisses me off. It's yet another instance where uh, the Democrats have become Republicans, like very similar to Republicans. Houston Cinema was protesting Thanks for getting me our the service. Game. The world is a dangerous... Especially because it like, really it doesn't matter. You, you could personally you. fucking execute uh, a, a, an ISIS prisoner on camera. Okay. Three months of being a true leftist. You can father. personally execute an ISIS prisoner on camera, and the Republicans are still gonna be like, "Shut up, you're a pussy. You wore you wore a tutu." Okay, that's not how this works. Like they already own patriotism. You do not. You will never own patriotism. They've already redefined it. And if you're gonna try to redefine patriotism, don't redefine it on their fucking terms. Here. Kirsten Cinema has the phony politician act down. She wants you to believe she's a moderate, but she's just a professional politician. Before Cinema went to Washington, she was a radical fringe protester. In 2002, the Arizona Democratic Party said she was, quote, too extreme. Cinema even called herself a socialist. That's right, a socialist. Radical, extreme, socialist. Don't fall for Kirsten Cinema's act. NRSC is responsible for the content of this advertising. And she's not that. because her name sounds like cinema chap better dead than red brother exactly voting with trump 50 percent of the time is a true sign of socialist yeah radical liberal Raphael warnock one of us yes chelsea uh said haas buff run on issues not propaganda who cares if someone calls them a socialist god americans are such hogs well that works in america like that does work in America because Democrats, like Republicans, instead of pushing back against that rhetoric, Democrats align with Republicans to shit on socialism and the left, not recognizing that that, turn, that will turn on them. Like, Democrats are so dumb when they also get on board with uh, attacking the left and socialism not yeah, recognizing, okay, attacking the left and socialism will literally turn back on them because all you're doing is legitimizing that, you know, socialism is something that's bad and the left is something that's bad. Missed two weeks of streams slash news. Because work, these motherfuckers say Nancy Pelosi is a socialist, dumbass. Stop fucking, stop, stop helping them. Like, stop aligning yourself with the Democrat, with the Republicans against other Democrats and against progressives, especially when the values you espouse are literally progressive values. And in the eyes of the average American, in the eyes of the average American hog, there's no difference between your like incrementalist approach and full blown fucking seizing the means of production. You get that, right? No matter how much you describe that, no matter how much you try to say, well, no, we're actually, uh, we're actually trying to advocate for free market solutions and, you know, uh, tax credits and whatnot. It's like, no, dude. No, they don't care. That's socialism. It's wealth redistribution. It's socialism. So stop arguing on those terms. Stop arguing on the terms of your opposition and start saying, no, this is bullshit. They call everything socialist. Guess what? A lot of the stuff that's socialism is actually good. So shut the fuck up. The word racist loss is meaning because of the left. Republican who calls half the United States socialist. I mean, Republicans weaponize socialism. Let's say the Democrats weaponize racism, right? Racist. There is truth to both. Because ultimately what Republicans think is socialism isn't like literally seizing the means of production. What Republicans think is socialism is socialization. Okay? Republicans think taxing people... And then having the government provide certain amenities is socialism. Okay? That's not a bad thing. That's a fucking good thing. Republicans think taxation is socialism. And Democrats, I think correctly, 
identify um, harming people from marginalized backgrounds on virtues that they can't change about themselves uh, and, and being bigoted towards them is racist, okay? Or bigoted. <laughs> and there is truth to that too. And while not every fucking uh, Republican is literally a Nazi or literally a racist, a lot of them are pretty goddamn racist in ways that we would normally recognize as like, oh, well, that's, you know, that's an old head mentality. Maybe that'll go away. You see what I'm saying? So there's truth to that if I'm going to be a radical centrist uh, in this way. They're ignorant. And they are. They are pretty racist. Like, you can't be, you can't be at least a little bit on board with racism if you're, gonna, if you're not going to agitate on, on, you know, welfare policies uh, uh, harming people because it gives the blacks money. Like, that's racist as fuck. If so many Americans want socialism, they'll win in a fair democratic election. Simply, it's mean it's time to try socialism if it were people wanted. Hey, son, do you think YouTube is still dominated by right wing channels, or has it lessened somewhat in recent years? I think it's like it's lessened somewhat. Um, it's lessened somewhat for sure because they won power. It's going to come back now. So, what happens is. When you have power, the opposition can set themselves up as counterculture, okay? As the valiant heroes defending uh, uh, against uh, an administration that is harming them, right? And these centrists and these right-wingers were, had done that under Obama and grew, right? But then ultimately Trump became president and win. they still kept crying about the win. same shit. Well, okay, win. well, that's your guy. Your guy is the fucking president. What are you doing? This is the guy that you loved. Like, you can't do that with someone like myself because, like, Joe Biden is not my fucking president. He's not my first choice. He's not even my fucking... He's not even on the list of choices, Paul okay, Trump. that I would have ever wanted for the United States of America. But these guys literally wanted Donald Trump. So when he was president and, and they were still crying about, like, blue-haired SJWs in college campuses that are, you know, gender non-binary or whatever, and, and as though those were, like you know, the biggest fucking problem makers in society as they did for like the first two years. You know, remember Jordan Peterson still was able to advocate for this sort of thing. People started recognizing that like, wait a minute. What the fuck are you talking about? Our, our guy won. And Pogo my life Arjan, still kind of sucks. And Jr. How History about you shut win. the fuck up? Pogo. So now that Joe Biden is president, I think that those guys are going to get uh, another, they're going to, they're going to start building their movement again. They're going to, gain more foothold because they can say, you know, Joe Biden is trying to uh, kill Republicans or something. You wanted Biden to win? No, I wanted Trump to lose. And by the way, the majority, the overwhelming majority of Biden voters were with me on that one. More so than wanting Biden to win. People that wanted Biden to win on the virtue of just Biden winning are in the minority. People that wanted Trump to lose were in the majority. 65 plus percent of Joe Biden voters literally voted against Donald Trump, whereas more than 70% of Trump voters voted for I Donald Trump. Well That's has. the big difference. Biden's at least a little bit better than Trump, right? Yes. Of course, Biden is a little bit better than Trump. Everyone is a little bit better than Trump. Technically, fucking Mitt Romney is a little bit better than Donald Trump. But that doesn't mean Mitt Romney's a good president. Biden wasn't the only option we had. Biden was, the, Biden was presented as the only option we had. <clears throat> Like, I said this during COVID. I told you guys this during COVID, and I said it again, especially after uh, the protest, the, the BLM protest started. Every Republican president in that circumstance would have been at least marginally better than Donald Trump in attacking uh, the problem effectively. Donald Trump's administ administration 
literally thought in the most childish way, in the most childish fucking way, that they could just avoid COVID and it would go away and that we could like low-key slowly do like a herd immunity thing. Like that was insane. No other Republican administration that has like at least a little bit of competence would do that. That doesn't mean that they would be good. But marginally, even a Republican would be better than Donald Trump in that way. Anyway, and now we 400,000 people are dead, you know? COVID is the only reason why Trump lost? Yeah, I know. I, I know. I, I've said that. That should terrify you, by the way. The inauguration should, or not the inauguration, the siege on the Capitol should upset you and terrify you, but not for the reasons why the media is telling you. Like, not for the symbolic reasons, you know, oh my God, there's a destruction of property, the halls of Congress, these are sacred institutions. Like, fuck off. I don't give a shit. It's fucking brick, and it's wood, and it's windows. Fuck that, okay? And those sacred institutions have done so much horrible shit legitimize so much horrible oppression on American citizens and also everywhere uh, around the world. So fuck Congress and its symbolism. However, what should terrify you is who was doing the storming and the sieging. Those people weren't all three percenters. There were plenty of small business tyrants that coexist around you that stormed the halls of capital. That's the terrifying part of it. Okay? That's the real terrifying part of it. The fact that uh, the Republican base is finally starting to take more serious action after years and years of being agitated and being emboldened. That should be terrifying for you.